The last Christological heresy we're going to examine is Nestorianism. I'm not going to lie, Nestorianism is confusing. I think you're a little confused. Nestorianism states that in Jesus there are two persons, one divine and one human. You see, God, when he came as Jesus, was two different things. He was either God or man, but never at the same time. So then who died on the cross, God or man? This is my golem Jesus, I guess. I don't know. My precious! The master will save us! I'm only a human! No, you're not! You're more than a human! No, I'm, I'm a human! You are more than a human! But, but what do you mean? You are God! I'm God? I'm not sure if I can handle being God! Don't worry, I'll be God for both of us! Nestorianism taught that Jesus was two persons in one. He had divinity and humanity. And at certain times of his life, his divinity showed, it overtook his humanity. An example of that would be the transfiguration, when he's on the mountaintop and he begins to glow, when he's performing his miracle stories. That's the divinity taking over the humanity of Jesus. I'll be honest with you, I don't fully understand Nestorianism. You are an idiot! <laughs> it's not very practical in my mind. But here's something else that's heretical about Nestorianism. The Nestorianists say that the second person of Trinity, the Logos as we come to understand it, was born when Mary gave birth to Jesus. So that's to suggest that the Logos has not always existed. But the Logos was born when Jesus was born. And I believe why this is worth noting, especially in this class, is again, my decade of experience has, has taught me that a lot of people believe the Trinity came into an existence at the birth of Jesus. Jesus always existed. He may not have been known as Jesus. After all, Jesus is the name we give to that Logos in, in the flesh. But the Logos has always existed. And a, a lot of Christians don't realize that. That the Trinity always existed. It wasn't born when Jesus was born. There's no particular scripture that promotes Nestorianism, but you can make the argument, again, that John's prologue does a pretty dang good job of challenging Nestorianism. To say that it was the Logos in the flesh. To say that the Logos always existed. Now, he doesn't get into detail, again, about the nature of Jesus being 100%, 100%. That comes later with the formation of the creeds. But what I really need you to understand from these, her these heresies that we studied is that there was no, there's no one version of Christianity for the first couple hundred years. Everyone had their own views of Christ and everything that I just got done telling you were very, very popular. It's all about popular. It's not about aptitude. It's the way you're viewed. So it's very shrewd to be very, very popular. Like me. <laughs> 